Hi everyone. Good afternoon. I think good almost morning for um, Rachel. Um, yeah. So this is uh, our mid-month, uh, you know, workshop event. So we basically have two events every month. One is end of the month uh, with something to do with your coaching uh, businesses, and then we have mid-month uh, around specific area, specific subject of uh, you know either Delenta or your coaching business. So today we got a special individual. When I say special, she's definitely a special. Uh, I, you won't believe Anki, our relationship almost in one year. Oh no. Can you believe? Twice when you're having fun. <laughs> there you go. So uh, it's, it's, it's last June we first met and, and we start talking. And of course, you know, you, you, you love the idea of Delenta and you basically help us with many other areas and you're part of our community. But most importantly, you're helping and empowering coaches around the world with your tech monster uh, brand, which is basically you're taming the tech monster, you're helping people to tame, tame the tech monster, which is a great concept. You know, I love that concept. And um, so she also has a podcast. Uh, it's a passion for business. Is that right, Anki? It's yeah. passion business podcast. Yep. Passion business podcast. And the book is awesome book. I think, you know, everybody could read that, uh, that book that you've written about taming the tech monster. Uh, which is a there's an ebook as well, right? We probably it's, on share Amazon. It it's on Amazon, on Kindle, Kindle and yeah. um, paperback. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to send a sign up link for a free copy of it if you like. Yeah, that would be wonderful because, uh, you know, anybody who's that. here, you know, yep. they are. I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. It's, it's a great book. I read the book and I, there are a lot of things resonate in terms of psychologically how we approach the technology, right? And And so. So uh, Anki actually background is technology, but she then moved to Spain and then she started her own business, right? And from there onwards, you know, she basically fell into the coaching world and now she's a business coach, plus she's basically helping coaches to uh, tackle that the tech challenges, etc. So uh, yeah, so she got, uh, you know, she also specialized in Delenta. So if you have any, uh, you know, uh, requirements in support onboarding you to Delenta, get Delenta working for your business, you know, uh, she can help you as well. Um, yeah, so on that point, we actually got a new slide deck, right? I'm going to test this slide deck with a story. Uh, you know, the, 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 the person who's behind this slide deck is Dania. She was basically hiding behind, but uh, it's not <laughs> hiding actually, you know, literally, but you know, she's behind the whole thing. So I'm going to basically do that story, right? Which I think most of us can, you know, relate to. So let me go that and would we like to get your feedback on that as well. So story start with Andrea, right? Any Andreas here? No, that's fine. But so Andrea, actually she is a middle-aged corporate executive. She's been building a career for the last 20 years or so, maybe 15 years. But one day she realized her you know, work-life balance is not the best. Her purpose is not fulfilled. You know? So she started coaching and mentoring business. And I'm sure most of us heard about this story from very, very different people, uh, you know, the same thing. And then what happened is she started loving the process because she's kind of creating her, her website. She's basically, you know, talking to people. She's talking to new, you know, she's created new networks and her working, you know, she loved the work-life balance because she's now actually helping people to follow, you know, find their purpose and, and help them out. But the problem is, the tech, right? So she's got overwhelmed by the tools, the noise, the processors, systems, and then trainers, a lot of other things. So she's now overwhelmed with all that. That makes her stuck. But actually what she wants to do is helping clients, coach them daily basis. And that's what she's passionate about. She loves the fact that she can help many people. So that's where she found Stilenta. Ta da right? That's how the story starts, right? So, so I know many of you know about Delenta, uh, but um, some of them are not. So what we have done is with Delenta, getting all the tools in the world, taking to one place and create one interface where you don't have to basically jump between so many tools and also don't have to spend so much hours of time on their website and every other thing, with them everything in one place and also help them to grow their business, save time, save money, you know, help more clients. That's the whole idea of that. Uh, we had done a survey internally. We found basically most of the coaches spend at least 
say four hours because they don't have to basically use multiple tools uh, when you use Delenta. Um, so you have coach landing page that you can create. You have a dashboard that you can basically get uh, feedback from. You have client portal that you can basically use your clients to uh, uh, you know, use and basically get them to streamline their uh, learning uh, with your coaching practice um, and the CRM. So this is where the MailChimp comes in. So when you look at the CRM, the CRM is the integral part of any business today. And the MailChimp is the integration that we have created uh, for coaches to streamline the way they capture emails and automate the email workflow, right? So that's where our specialist, uh, Anki, is coming into play, right? So basically, we don't control much around MailChimp, but what we do is we have a tight connection between MailChimp and us. When somebody book an availability from your calendar, we are, if you are integrated with the MailChimp, it will push that contact into your MailChimp mailing list. They call it audience list, right? You will hear back, you know, hear from, uh, you know, all this terminology from, from Anki soon. Uh, Paul, you're going to love this because I know you're, you're fascinated by MailChimp, what it can do for your business. And I'm sure for others as well, right? Uh, and uh, so Anki, on that note, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this over to you. But anyway, like, what about the presentation, that, that story? Do you like, like it? Like any thumbs ups? No, thumbs yeah, down. No, I, I love a little story because it makes it more tangible and, yeah. you know, it makes it more real. Yeah, I love it. Yep, yep. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, cool. So let's, let's not, uh, okay, I'm going to pass the, uh, I'm going to stop sharing and then I can, you can basically take over and then uh, go into it. Thanks, Rachel. She's loving it as well. Paul, do you like it? Brilliant. Okay. Ready to go? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen in a second and I'm going to, um, I think we're starting at the top because one of the things that makes MailChimp and other platforms confusing at times is when you kind of don't really, when you sort of jump in and you don't really know what it all is and then you don't know where to start. So when there's like the bigger bird's eye view missing, it's like, yeah, if I dump you in Tokyo, somewhere in the middle of a street and you go, oh, I don't even know where I am, right? But you kind of, if I lift you out and you can see, oh, okay, there's the Sony building and there's this, you find your orientation. It's much easier to find your way around. So we're going to start there. And yeah, terminology is a big part of that because I think that's, especially MailChimp is guilty <laughs> on that front that they use weird terminology and not exactly intuitive and sometimes not exactly precise. So you get more confused by that. So we're going to have a look at how this whole thing works anyway, and then we're going to have a look at what that looks like at MailChimp. Obviously, given the time frame, it's going to be like a, you know, an overview. You know, <laughs> we could talk about this topic um, all day if you had the patience for it. <laughs> but I think um, if there's if questions are coming up, I'll, when I'm on a roll, I probably won't see them, but. Um, please pop them in the, in, the, in, the, in the comments. Or Sam, if you see something that really needs kind of, you know, that people okay. can't wait, just say something, right? Because Absolutely. yeah, I know myself, I probably won't see the comments, but you know, I want to leave space for, for, for comments because, you know, and also if you find, you kind of know what I'm talking about, let me know too, because, you know, I always say in, learning and teaching is connecting something unknown to something known right and sometimes it's not always easy to know where the known bit starts and where that finishes so i don't want to bore you with stuff you already know but i also don't want to throw stuff at you where you go what is all that right so if i'm off there somewhere then uh, please let me know so i'm going to go and share my screen now i have a question actually can you see, because see, I would quite like to uh, avoid going in full on presentation mode because then I can um, move over to MailChimp and we can actually have a look at it and it's gonna be easier. But if, you, if it's sort of big enough for you to see, then, um, then we can stay here. Okie dokie. Now I think the first question really is why the heck would you even want an email list? And, um, <clears throat> The one answer I always have for that is 
don't, you know, play all you want, but don't build your house in somebody else's backyard. So relying on social media is not a good idea. You know, Facebook owns Facebook, LinkedIn owns LinkedIn. They can shut down your account anytime or restrict it or whatever. And we've all known somebody or we all know, somebody, at least I know a number of people who've had that happen without doing anything weird. So you own your email list. So that's always, I mean, not everybody opens every email. Yes, that's true. But you having a direct way to contact your people, I think is worth is worth doing and um and the other part of it is if you build a business you'll be in touch with you know more and more people and you cannot send everything via gmail right so because that's often the question so why can't i just use gmail like why do i even need mailchimp or any other platform for that matter right so the difference it's really about about spam and deliverability Right, so Gmail isn't made. The Gmail is your personal email account. You send, you can send emails to ten of your friends and say, "Hey, let's meet up on Saturday." That's fine, but you cannot use Gmail, or you know, at least not your normal Gmail. You can use groups, but anyway, you can't use Gmail to go out and blast um, emails to you know five hundred people. So that's just not um, <clears throat> because I think a lot of spammers have really. basically have led people have led companies to be stricter about this nobody likes to receive a lot of stuff that isn't relevant or that's dodgy or whatever so basically if you have a platform like mailchimp then you know they make sure that the, that it isn't some nigerian prince who try and sell you viagra right so that people only receive emails from you when they've actually actively signed up for them and they will always have an unsubscribed list an unsubscribe button they will always be able to see where an email comes from so it's about trust and it's about deliverability so that's why yes an email list is a good idea and now the next question is why mailchimp right <laughs> so yeah and the tracking and reporting yes almost forgot about that that's the other part if you send out an, 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 an email you know on whatever even client you use well okay it's out if you're lucky you have some sort of tool that, uh, that helps you see when somebody's opened it. But in MailChimp, you can see who's opened what, who's clicked on what, you know, and so you can really see which of your content actually resonates with people, right? And who are your, you know, most active content contacts, who are the people who are actually interested in the stuff that you talk about. So the next question is, how does all of this really work, right? So at the heart of it, all of, and this is basically what I've got here that applies to any system, no matter what email marketing platform you use. Obviously, there's quite a few others. Um, there's always at the heart of it is a list of contacts, right? So there's basically just you use, your email address is like the key. That's, that's the thing that identifies a contact. Sometimes you have names. Sometimes you kind of, they will be always know when they got added. And there might be other bits and bobs of information, but you really don't want to collect stuff you don't need. So... Um, and obviously there's a way to get on that list and the two major ways are people and you would have signed up like you know for different things like for example even this event so you put your name and email address somewhere and you end up on a list and in response you get something right and so that's the normal plan a most common way of getting on a list but then there's also integrations and here we are at Delenta, right so Delenta sits out of here and, and has a way of talking to MailChimp. So when you do something in Delenta, Delenta will then send the details of a person to your list on, on MailChimp, right? So now once you've got them on your list, well, the whole point of having a list is so that you can actually email them and send them emails, right? And then you can see who clicked and who did what. And so that's really quite, quite powerful. But that basically that overview applies to any system and it doesn't really matter which one, which one you use. Now, since we're talking about MailChimp, the question is why would you want to use MailChimp? Well, there's two reasons. Um, one is it's established. It's a very established platform. I would say it's, um, it's a little bit like MailChimp is for email marketing platforms, what Hoover is for vacuum cleaners, you know, and 
but it's also a little bit like the London Tube, like it was there first, you know, which means it really integrates well with others, you know, just like the Lenta, you, you can integrate MailChimp with anything, like everybody speaks to MailChimp, right? So, and it's really, really good at that. So any other tool you use, you're never going to get in trouble as you sometimes can if you use a little tool that's just come out and nobody knows about it so there won't be anybody playing nicely with it either um, and it's got still the most generous free plan to get anybody started like there's literally 2,000 free contacts it's lived obviously it's got some limitations but it's got plenty to get you started so you can have one list, you can, you know, tag people, you can have forms and sign up pages, you can send welcome emails and your normal emails anyway. So it's a definitely, um, you know, a great place to start. What makes it confusing and why I would imagine a lot of people actually sign up for it and go, oh, I don't really know what this is. It, well, there's, <laughs> there is the term, the question of terminology and we're gonna get to that in a second. But there's also another element that I just want to point out, which would explain. So, so if you find Mailchimp confusing, it doesn't mean you know, kind of, you don't understand this stuff. Mailchimp was there first, right? And Mailchimp was built, built when the internet was worked differently, when people had newsletters, and newsletter was the only way of getting onto a list, right? So that's how the architecture was built. So now things have changed, and now people have different lists and different things that people can sign up for. So all of a sudden the architecture they have isn't really ideal anymore and everybody else comes out with these different approaches and new functionality and MailChimp is working really hard to keep up. So they come out with new functionality that now sometimes ends up in really weird places. So that's where, why it's confusing at times and why it sometimes has a name, you know, you think, oh, it's got tags as well, but that's, they don't work the same as for the platform. So that's where the confusion can come from. And basically what I'm saying, it's not your fault, right? So, okay, terminology, understanding the terminology really, really explains a lot, right? And it's not always straightforward, uh, or it's not always that intuitive. Like audience, well, you know, that's not too bad. It's basically a list of contacts, you know, and you can import them from a list, from a spreadsheet, and you can export them into a spreadsheet. So it's literally a list, and, and they call it audience, right? So, a campaign is, I think, perhaps the most confusing word out of all of them, because in most systems, a campaign is basically an email, right? But especially since MailChimp has moved into integrating a lot with social media and things like that. So on MailChimp, a campaign isn't even just, isn't, isn't even an email. A campaign is basically something that gets sent out to your contacts. Right? And they even call a landing page a campaign, like kind of anything that gets sent to people in one way or another is called a campaign. So when you want to write an email to your people, you're going to say create campaign, as weird as that sounds. Now, an automation is basically one type of a campaign. So it's basically, if you compare it to a normal email, you write an email, subject, send it to somebody, your body, and off and send you go that's your normal email an automation you set it up once and then that gets sent when something happens the most common case is when somebody signs up for your list somebody submits a form an integration delenta sends contact details over when somebody in a new contact gets added to your list this thing gets triggered off right and that usually is hello, a welcome email, right? So, and that can be one email or it can be a whole series of emails. Send an email, wait for a day, send another email so you can really build a whole, you know, a whole series of, of emails and things. And um, yeah, sign up form, pretty straightforward. It's basically where people enter their details, submit it, they end up on the list and in return, they get something. So now that's where the whole lead magnet thing comes in. The lead magnet is a thing that people will get in return for giving you their email address. So these days it's almost like your first sale because that's, you can really see how initially, how this started. Oh, I've got a newsletter. Everybody was like, oh, I want on a newsletter. And then people got so fed up with all these newsletters that people realized, no, no, I have to, 
give people something that they find valuable in return for their email address. Otherwise, nobody is going to hand over their email address. And then people started giving whole books and, and courses and a whole lot of stuff like in, with the intent to give a lot of value. And uh, now people are kind of fed up with that too. So now you want something that is really valuable, that solves a problem, that's quick to consume, you know, and basically that can be a PDF, it can be a video, it can be anything that is relevant to your audience. And that is what they sign up for to get onto your list, right? So definitely work, it's a whole topic on its own. And um, landing page is the last one I wanna quickly cover because it gets thrown around a lot, you know, in the landing page and people use that term in, in the wildest ways, which makes it really difficult. So it's basically a web page. It's basically a web page that usually has a form on it. There's, and the whole point is the difference between this one and another page is there's only one thing you can do. And usually it's used to get people to sign up for something. And there's nothing else to do on this page. There's no menu, no, nothing else to distract people. And a lot of the email marketing platforms, including MailChimp, now actually includes a builder. Like you can build a landing page directly on MailChimp. And the reason you want that is because if you get, for you to get somebody to sign up for something, just a form, just to say, here, sign up, isn't going to be enough. You need a bit of space to explain what they'd be signing up for and why it would be a good idea for them. So you need that space around the form anyway. So MailChimp is one of the platforms that allows you to build that. You could build it on your website or lead pages, you know, that kind of stuff. But so MailChimp has that too. And in MailChimp specifically, it's actually really interesting. And we'll maybe get to that um, a little later. So when you start out and you want to start setting up MailChimp, um, the first step is always setting. Settings are your friend, right? And usually MailChimp is quite good in talking you through now this, now that, now do this, now do that. And if I can give you one tip, don't skip that, right? Because a lot of the time, any issues that come up happen because some setting somewhere isn't done or isn't filled in properly and then something doesn't work and it all gets weird. So settings is your friend. And in MailChimp, you have two layers of setting, one that are applied to the whole account. And the important things here is, you know, well, obviously name, but address, for example, is something to know. MailChimp will ask you for a physical address, right? And any email that gets sent out will always have a physical address at the bottom, right? It's all about this whole idea of pr protecting people from being spammed by <laughs> the Nigerian princess. So I would usually recommend, you know, if you have an office address, that would obviously be better than your home address, but you definitely need a physical address. Uh, your time zone security is um, basically how you protect your account. You know, so notification settings, you can be notified when people subscribe to your list and things like that. So that's usually, you know, that's fine. Time zone, you want to make sure um, that's set up. So that's your basic settings. And then you have settings for each list. Right? If you're on a free plan, you only have one. So that's your main list. And the defaults here, what's important there to think about is uh, whether you want double opt-in or not. And double opt-in means when somebody submits email and the name and email, you don't directly get, that person doesn't get added to the list immediately. They get a, you would have received it, there were loads of stuff where you would receive a confirmation email first and then you have to say, okay, and only then will you be added to the list. Email marketing platforms are usually recommended. Obviously, you're gonna lose a few people on the way, but the people you do sign up Kind of really want to be there so it's quality over quantity you know there's pros and cons to each but that's basically you need to set that up on on a list level you know so you have your forms that's a that's a bit of a quirk of mailchimp that forms actually sort of there's one list and one form which is a bit weird but that's coming from the old days uh, gdpr settings if you're in europe you know that's basically mailchimp has that really nicely solved and the photo notice, there's always something that has to remind people why the heck you did get this. Oh, because you signed up for my free book at the time, right? So that kind of stuff. So for each list, and we're going to have a look at this. Uh, yeah, so if you're setting up 
any other you know integration with others there is a way it will ask you for your mailchimp api keys right so you go to account extras api keys i've got a little document that i'm going to send out a little cheat sheet where i've got more like screenshots and stuff like that for things like that that you can uh keep so just just to interrupt there and keep this is going going really well just just a very quick one with delenta you have a single sign-on which is basically we have o2 which is you don't have to do anything you just basically enter you you know once you basically enable mailchimp it will redirect you to the mailchimp page where you enter the you may email and the user password that's it you need to do that's all oh okay oh that's great yeah because the, the, the api key really tri trips people <laughs> it, it's exactly what it is that's what we have is to simplify the process of integration so it's, it's much easier yeah that's very cool. That's very cool. Um, yeah. So when you are now looking at a list or audience to be uh, to speak Mailchimp, um, basically the whole point of this idea of segmentation is to give people relevant stuff. Like we all hate it when we get things that oh, what is that oh, that doesn't apply to me, right? So basically, what you want is you want to say. Um, you know, these people are interested in this. And when I talk about this, I only want to send it to, to the people who have expressed interest in that particular thing. So that is where tags, you know, you've seen tags on blog posts and which is basically like a label to say, you know, what people have done, interest they've expressed and things like that. So there's different ways of segmenting. That's where MailChimp is a little quirky at times because it's basically all that stuff basically appeared on the market much later than they were created. So they are now like, oh, how are we going to do that? So that's where it can be a little bit, especially with tags. They now say we do have tags, but <laughs> there's specific ways how you can get them on. And we're going to have a look at that in a second. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. So adding content Contact to your list manually, you can do it. Like there's a button, create contact, but you really, really want to be careful with that because the idea is that people actively give you consent to add them, right? So you shouldn't just go to go to a network event or, or you go to LinkedIn and grab somebody's email address from their contact and chuck it on your mailing list. Like you really shouldn't do that. And it's not in your best interest to these people will go, who is that? And they might mark you as spam, which impacts the deliverability of your email. So it's definitely, it's not good practice and it's certainly not in your, in your best interest. So add manually while it's possible, it's definitely not, not what you want to do. So that's the double opt in again. And so the whole point of having an email list is to email people, right? <laughs> so, so you've got different ways of emailing. The one is your, standard campaign that's just a normal email hey you know i've got this thing or this what happened last week send to your list hit send now it's just like if you were sent to an email to, to a friend just that recipients are a bunch of people that's the most basic thing and the other part is you can schedule a campaign so you can say i don't know i've got an event coming up so i've got reminders that i've already written and scheduled to go out on the day before at a specific time and then I, I can set and I can go away and forget about it and those emails go out when they need to go out and then we've got the automations that can be one or more emails triggered by what somebody has done when a certain time comes when you know certain something happens and then again that gets set up once and then it runs automatically so it's really powerful for a for a welcome series right so if you say somebody signs up for this thing and then over the next whatever time, you know, every week, every couple of days, they get something and they really get a chance to get to know you and you don't have to do anything, which is always good because then you can do something if you like better than writing emails. Now, yeah, the reports are really, really powerful. You can always see what's, um, you know, what somebody did and how many people opened up, up an email and how many clicked and who clicked on what. And so it really gives you an idea of, you know who's playing and and what they're interested in so i want to have a look do we still have time to actually have a look at mailchimp and not make it so theoretical so if you come to mailchimp now one thing to notice uh it's quite funny because every time i, I don't use mailchimp all the time so 
every time I come in here, it's a surprise because they work a lot, right? They do make a lot of changes. And it's a little bit, every time you come in here, it looks a little bit different. So now at the moment, the dashboard here, what you see, uh, yeah, this is just a, an account that, that, you know, I created I don't know, a year or two ago, whatever. And so the dashboard, it gives you just an overview of what's going on, the latest things, list growth, nothing going on here for me. Um, you know, so there were times when this looked a lot more confusing when they kind of have all these journey and what, you know, so then they have funny names for stuff like there's also customer journey is actually basically an automation builder, right? So, uh, so, but that's fine. So what's interesting here is basically this little bar here on the left. So if we look at what we, what we talked about, you know, if you look on uh, click on your, on your name down here, you can see your profile, your account, and that's where our friends, the settings are, right? So you've got your settings here, the details, and literally when you start, you just go here through one, just go through it, you know, one by one. See that the email builder is new, brand new, I hadn't even seen that. You know, you can say what notifications you want. Um, you literally wanna just step through all of them. Here you've got your security options, two-factor authentication, that's basically, where username and password isn't enough, there will be some other email or phone message, something else to basically protect your account. So there's these settings here. Your contact information, that's basically what goes at the footer of, of, of each email. That's where your physical address needs to go. Uh, you'll also need to verify your email address. <clears throat> so basically, if you send an email from you know, your name at your company.com, you, you will be prompted to verify that email address and you don't want to forget that because basically they want to make sure that you're authorized to send on behalf of that email address that's actually yours. So that's definitely something that, that you'll be asked to confirm and you definitely don't want to forget that because otherwise all oh, your emails don't arrive or they, they end up in some spam folder and so you definitely don't want to mess around with that. Uh, so the extras here is where your API keys, if you ever should need them, and the rest of it you don't really have to worry about. Now here we've got our audience, right? So that's our people inbox is a new thing. So where basically people can reply to an email and it'll show up here. That's something new, haven't even tried that. Um, so they... Now here you basically get some overview, right? And so how many people, they're really good at reporting, at, at telling you, you know, where people are from. Uh, that would be me now. Um, basically your most active users and, and, you know, your list growth and that sort of stuff, that they're basically quite good in, in telling you that. Now here, what's interesting is the bit here and manage audience. Right, so that's here where you also have your whole, where you can import contacts if you have them from somewhere. And here's where you set up your sign up forms. You can see it on the menu here as well. Right, so, and that's probably the most confusing bit if you don't know the background of it. Right, it's a, when you see where this came from, when people sign up for, it for a newsletter and there's a list and you need a form to sign up and that's that, it was totally in the right place. But these days it's a little, you usually have all the contacts that are interested in a particular topic in your business in one list, and then you separate them out with different tags and segments. So you don't have to create another audience, which then you have pretty much no chance of, of preventing people from getting duplicates, right? So people who are, you because you can't send an email to say, oh, I want one set up on that list, but not on the other list. So that's when this gets a little bit kind of odd, but there's usually a way to, to solve it. If you have a straightforward, I've got my coaching business, I've got one list of people, and here's how they, how they sign up for it, you don't have a problem at all. You just need to remember that the form builder is actually on the list level, which is, you know, but um, on that form builder, thank you. Very really quick question from Rachel. Uh, she's mm -hmm. asking whether uh, can my PO box go into the uh, footer instead of my physical home address? 
they don't, I don't, well, you wouldn't probably don't get on a wave. I don't think they, they, they'll do it. They'll let you do it. They really insist on a physical address. I mean, I often do, you know, what I do is I kind of take my address, whatever, and then I kind of make a mistake with the number or don't put my house number there or something like, you know, basically something <laughs> to make sure no weirdo shows up on my doorstep, but, uh, <laughs> but they don't really let you do a PO box number. No. Yeah. Okay. Rachel, you are good. Uh, is there anything, anything else you want to ask or you're good? She must be good. Okay. Cool. Okay. So basically you've got your, uh, sign up form, you know, where it basically it's a place where it allows you which to, to, to define which fields you want on it. And again, they have a whole heap of stuff here by default, which really you don't want, right? Normally what you want is first name is always helpful email. You have to have, otherwise nothing will function. And the only other thing I would collect is first name. And that's just simply so you can write emails that say, Hey Jane and not Hey there or something, right? So it's just much more personal. So the first name and people usually don't hesitate giving that. Anything else, before you ask anything else, you would wanna have a good reason for asking for it, right? If I always, if you know, if you get the slightest, I mean, I don't know what's, what you're like, when I sign up and you ask me for my phone number and I can't see why you'd need that, I'm not gonna sign up. I close this tab so fast, <laughs> you know? So it's like literally, only ask what you really need, you know, and, and basically most of the time you don't need anything other than name and, um, and email address. So don't ask them for their address unless you want to ship them something. And, you know, so basically this is the uh, GDPR stuff here that you can, can set up in the, on the, um, yeah, we don't need to go through all the things now because otherwise you're going to probably go crazy here. But so here on the, in the settings, right? So you've got here your, your uh, names and defaults. Again, like you go for the account settings first and then you come here, you know, and you say, uh, this is also something that sometimes maybe if you have a WordPress site or something, you know, that's your audience ID that kind of often gets asked. So again, settings, any of those stuff settings is your, is your, is your place. Here's where you can able, enable the double opt-in. And here you can say, okay, these are the GDPR fields that I that, that you want, right? And here's the from name and whatever, so defaults you can set. So all of this stuff is like you want to go through that in the beginning because that's just makes your life easier. You've got your footer content. And um, and so you've got your audience, and then here you've got your campaigns, right? And so if you don't know campaigns, what whatever, so basically here you can see everything's a kind of campaign. But the most straightforward thing is to say create campaign. And they're quite good in a sense that um, that they talk you talk you through it. Hang on, do I have to? Okay. So, so choose what you want to do. I just want to send an email. I just want to send a regular email. Now a template is an interesting one. Like if you use MailChimp, it's a good idea to create yourself a template which is basically where you put anything that's common, your logo, your colors, your footer, your signature, anything that you want to have on all your emails, you're going to put that in a template so then you don't have to redo the thing all the time, every time. So, and then you would normally go and say, okay, my event or my newsletter, whatever. That's just for you, right? That's just so you know what it was. And, um, Now here, this is actually, this is a really, really nice way. It basically literally talks you through all the bits you need. Okay, who is it to? So it, it, if you only have one audience, it'll, it'll uh, you know, tell you. Here is where you can say, oh, I only wanted to send with, to the people with tag, whatever. You know, from that's usually, if you have different email addresses, you know, and then it always, it opens up a little window and you save that and it takes you back to the, to the, um, you know, to the, to the, what's it called thing here. So basically here you go, your subject line, that's what people see. Um, this week's newsletter, whatever. Preview text is the little bit that you see next to. So here they give you some, some hints. Again, you fill it in, you say save, and it'll take you back to the guide. 
And so you've got all of this, you can see your little ticks, you've got all that, so now your content. And the content thing is probably the last thing I wanna show you because the concept really applies to landing pages and all that stuff as well. The builder is always the same, right? So here it'll ask you, do you have a template they wanna use? And so it gives you some defaults, but so basically every time you click on an element, you see how that left panel here changes into the properties box for the thing, right? So here you can so and then set your own logo, you can center it, you can say which where it should lead. And then if you click away, you know, and you click on something else, you can basically, okay, here you can say the font and the text. So every time you click on something and see when you come here, it gives you a little plus and you can add other elements in there and you see all the elements you've got here. You can, you know, pop a video in here, or you can you know, put a button in there. So on the plus sign, you see what you can add. And then every time you select an element on the left here, you can see what you can do with it, right? And then once you're done with it, you basically say continue. That was a very boring email now. And so it takes you back here. Okay, now <laughs> it tells me, hey, you lazy, lazy lady, you haven't done anything. So normally that would be like a blue tick as well. And, um, and then you can basically send, you can either schedule it, that's available only on the paid plan, or you just hit send and it just gets sent to everyone, right? So that's really the main thing you wanna, you wanna usually do here. And, um, and when you come, come here, you can always see these are in draft. These are the ongoing ones, which would be your welcome emails, the ones that are set once. And then, um, you know, and then here you can see this one was, was sent, how many people have seen it, how many people have clicked, how many people have subscribed. So you can see already the reports and then you can click on the, once it's sent, you get the reports for it and you can really see what, you know, who looked at it and you can, it's pretty fine grained what you can see about what, you know, how people reacted. To your, you know, what have you interacted with your email? So yeah, so that's basically a fly-through overview um, of Mailchimp. I hope I haven't confused the life out of you now. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I, I mean, that's the. I mean, you have compressed a lot of information there. You know, the, the limited time we got. Um, one question I think Paul you got is uh, you have three categories of audience. Uh, I would say like there are three different audience lists, maybe, right? How do I send different emails to them? Yeah, there's uh, depends on, on what different categories means. If they are, for example, I have a list for the people that, con that basically signed up for my dressmaking stuff, right? So they're over there. And then I have people that are interested in tech monster stuff and that kind of stuff. So they have nothing to do with each other. Like there's literally not a single email other than a happy Christmas email that I would ever want to send to both of them. So they're in different lists, right? And then I send an email, this list, off you go, right? So now if you have, say for example, in my Tech Monster list, I have people that are interested in the networking events I do. I have people that are interested in others, you know, in, I don't know, in, in, in the book or in workshops, right? So they will get tags. You know, so when, depending on usually in, on MailChimp, if you use their landing pages, you can really say when somebody submits this thing, give them that tag, or you can, you know, add tags to people. And then you can say, who should this email go to? Well, this list, but only this segment, only this part of, of, the, of the list, only the people with tag, whatever, only the people who have join the list after the last email goes out, things like that. So there's, there's that's the, the segments and the tags, and there also is a way of groups. It really depends on what three categories of audience means and, and how you wanna, you know, what's different and what's common between them. Hmm. So it's groups, tags, or segments. Can you hear me? Can you demonstrate mm -hmm. that? I mean, these are three, uh, um, I mean, you can't have three lists. And you can only have one list. Isn't well, you, right? can, you can have one list on the free plan. If you're on a paid plan, you can have as many lists as you want. Ah, so the answer is get a paid plan if you want. I mean, these are three different categories of people that I don't want to send 
Yeah, I mean, if they're um, really different, you would probably want to. And I have the, um, wait, hang on, I was going to, in the little cheat sheet here, I've got the link to the, yeah, if you want three different lists, you definitely, definitely want. You can't you know, just do it with tags. Well, you, you could. The problem is with MailChimp is the way you add tag. When, if, you, if you know, right, if you can go in here, and uh, so where are my people now? Hang on. Can no we do that with the tags? Uh, we, well, we probably, I mean, if you know, you know, if you know you, you can, oh, oh God, what I've got here, hang on. I'm trying to save the segment. So I've got all these contacts here. So you can, if yeah. you know, you know, if you can say, well, all these people here, you know, get a certain tag, you know, add or remove tags. I can select people here and add a tag, right? And then I can yeah. say, send an email only to the people with that tag. Right? So you can. So if, you you have can. A, if you have a way of, of the, the thing is the way you can assign tags, it's either here in the list, you can import a list and add the tag, or if they sign up through a landing page that you create here. And you can assign straight away. Oh, if somebody submits this, give them that tag. So you can tag them. But and then would they you not go, be tagged? Hmm? Would they not be tagged automatically? Can they? Can they? If you if they opt in, um, can you? Well, if they, they opt in through, they, you know, you have to pass on that information, right? So if you, if you say, for example, I don't know, say for example, good question, Delenta, right? So if some if somebody's if you send a contact over through the Delenta integration, do you have a way of saying, hey, give them that tag? Or not? Because most integrations You're don't. Me? Most integrations give the name and the email and then they get here and then how do you know, yeah. right? That's exactly. So it's really difficult for us to dictate that. I mean, it, it, it's almost like we are pulling the tags from MailChimp and try to basically wrestle with MailChimp with the. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not easy, right? So that's yeah. why I'm saying it depends on how do you know who belongs in which in which category. Yeah, yeah. But in, in Paul's yeah. case, because Paul is basically moving from another platform, so you've got all the three mailing lists when you're importing the well, mail list. Well, you then you kind of, then you're kind of good because yeah. then you can, when you import, you can import the tags. Yeah. So if you have them in three different, you know, if they have different tags or they come from three different lists, on the way in, when you import them, then you can say, hey, give them this tag. Yeah. That you can do for sure, right? And for new people who sign up, you can go and create, um, oops, where is it? You can go and create here landing pages, or you can go here, whatever, create, where am I? Where am I? Create campaign. See, what I want to do is to say here, create a landing page, you know, so that whatever. And then here you can say, okay, I want them to go into this list, which is fair enough. So if you only have one, that's not, then there's nothing here for you to do. So I'm just going to pick one, whatever. Pick a template, is this one now? Yeah. So again, here you've got your little builder, um, you know, where you can, where you can um, add your stuff and you can add your form. So here you can add a form. And that form, you can say, hey, I want the first name. And then, I totally need to move this other way, you know? So if I now create my landing page and I say, okay, I told them I want people who sign up if to go to this audience and, what, go away. And here I can basically say, okay, when people submit this landing page, give them these tags, right? So this, that's why landing pages are interesting in MailChimp because you can create a space for people to sign up for your thing and you can add the tags and you assign the tags when they submit it. So that's for people who will be new. The ones you already have, you can import and you can keep the tags there. Okay. All right. So theoretically I could do it, but um, yeah. there is um, no way I can remember all of that. <clears throat>
<laughs> well, if you, if you want to get, get in touch and I'll, I'll send out the little, little cheat sheet and stuff like that. But um, yeah, if you want to get in touch and I'll, I'll, I'll help you through it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, Anki is specialized in helping coaches, right? She knows exactly the areas that not only the requirement, probably she might be able to advise most of you in terms of how to manage this uh, as a you know way of uh, helping your business as well. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, Tech is uh, definitely a monster in that case, isn't it? Yeah, I just want to get started in a very simple way and yeah. I'm just like completely blocked because I do have these very specific groups of people and I don't want to that, that need yeah. different different um yeah, emails it's not yeah it's fine I mean you can go and get them into one list on the way importing them they get their tags so you know who's who mm. right and then you decide if they you know how will they be added to you know if, if new people come Right, so then you would have three different landing pages, and each one, when you submit this one, you get that tag. If you submit the other one, you get that All tag. Right. Okay. You know, and then you can go and send emails out, and you say, "I want emails to my list, but only to the people who have this tag." Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a Thank lot. You. Thank you. you know, you. this is this is amazing, and uh, really grateful that you basically gave this, uh, you know, insight to Mailchimp. Uh, most of you have, you know, requested uh, to have a session like this, so it's great. And I just realized Sandeep also joined from India. Actually, he's uh, hope everything's all right, Sandeep over there. And uh, and uh, you know, thank you very much for joining uh, in your late hours as well. Um, yeah. So on that note, I think uh, we're coming to the conclusion of the of the event. So again, thanks a lot, uh, Anki, for joining us. And, you know, in the delivery and and everybody else who's joining us to participate in the event and thanks to all the engagement. Mm -hmm.